my current work presently deals with developing advanced systems for energy storage. Uh, for example, developing advanced batteries for portable applications like for mobile phones, batteries for electromobility, not only for starting the car but also for powering the car. And in the present time, we're looking at developing even bigger electrochemical energy systems that can store energy at a larger scale for off-grid and mini-grid applications. I'm very interested in defense in long-lived tree species. So, so trees are a little bit different because they are long-lived and they're going to be attacked by different pests and pathogens during their lifetime. So I'm interested in some novel mechanisms of defense inside of tree species. I'm specifically working in eucalyptus and in pines, but what's really important is that these mechanisms can also be found in other species, so they can be transferred to, to crops. And that's quite important because with crops, you may have resistance that breaks down much quicker. And now if we understand the kinds of mechanisms that confer broad spectrum, long lasting resistance, I think we have another tool to help us to improve crops and, and protect yield in Africa. Essentially, the field is earth science. We try and understand the earth. And I apply seismology and geophysics to understand the earth in general. And in simple terms, the seismologist uh, tries to understand earthquakes, how they occur. And also, can, we can also use earthquakes to see into the interior of the earth. Africa has its own challenges. Uh, one of the biggest challenges is um, infrastructure. So there are sensors, sure, but most of them are restricted to South Africa, East Africa. So South Africa, South Africa has also made huge investments in um, building geophysical infrastructure. East Africa was most of the world's interested in volcanoes, how the volcanoes occur, so the East African Rift, uh, but not so much in West Africa, Northern Africa, and Central Africa. So my uh, broad, broad time goal in particular as it relates to Africa is to hopefully obtain uh, an infrastructure grant to actually build a truly continent-wide uh, seismic array infrastructure so that we can do in Africa what's been done in the world. We have entered the era of sustainable development goals. These are the global uh, agreements that governments have signed up to in terms of ach achieving an agenda around poverty eradication, prosperity, uh, improvement, and, and achieving health outcomes. And we are seeing several trends within the field of health policy and systems research driven by not only the sustainable development goals, but changing patterns in understanding of how the old challenges, which haven't um, necessarily changed over time, are meeting the new challenges. So for example, um, if you look at just some of the, the contextual factors, you see that within our countries we're having to deal with changes in the demographic um, burden of disease, profile of disease, so increasing non-communicable diseases, um, still in the face of emerging disease outbreaks like Ebola or like Zika. Um, climate change is a threat uh, and governments have to find money somewhere to fund their own health systems in the face of changing donor patterns. So within that broad context and where the field is um, positioning itself to try to address those. I am most interested in the aspect of health system governance. So this is really looking at the architecture of a health system and how a health system is organized to be able to um, answer the questions of service delivery in a context of how policies or how technology, technological interventions get introduced. So what I'm working on right now, uh, I lead the research lab at the University of Nebraska and our lab is called the Nano and Microsystem Research Lab. We work in a general area of um, energy conversion using solid state uh, methods such as thermal photovoltaics and thermal electrics. Also we work on thermal management of high, high heat flux microelectronics and what I mean by that is uh, we're trying to find out how to cool electronics. And the conventional way of doing it in general is just to put a heat sink on top of your microchip and then just use flow or some other liquid to cool it. And in my lab what we're trying to do is to understand where, where the heat comes from and how do we f solve that problem within the microsystem itself. So that means we need to design heat sinks uh, microcoolers that are on the same scale as the microprocessors. So that requires a lot of physics. Uh, beside the engineering application, uh, there comes, there's also the basic knowledge that we get out of it too. Because it turns out when you go to a micro nanoscale, the physics that we learn 
uh, in a macro scale, in, you know, when you're in high school, in early college, it's not true. It doesn't apply anymore. So we need to now really start to learn new physics and try to understand it and develop new concepts and theories. And